Hello guys, today we start talking about the nervous system. We're going to talk only about the fundamentals, it's like an overview of how the nervous system and the nervous tissue works. And we're going to move back and forth through the levels of organization uh, within the organ system. We're going to start describing the the nervous system as an organ system, then as a tissue, then as an, the organs of this system. We're going to be moving in this ladder of levels. Um, <clears throat> so let's start describing this system. And the best way is to start off saying or describing, explaining what is the main function of this tissue. And what the nervous system does is that connects or creates the link between whatever is going on on the external environment that is outside our bodies or inside the internal environment um, and our reactions. So we're going to be aware of the temperature outside if somebody touches us, if somebody hurts us, burns us or if inside our body temperature is too high or too or is so cold or um, the blood uh, is too acidic or too basic, all of these parameters are going to be or stimuli are going to be detected and sent by uh, to the nervous system. The nervous system is going to integrate all of this stimulus coming from different sources and then it's going to create a response based on those stimulus. And that response usually is a motor command. It's an order for a muscle to contract. Uh, it can be a skeletal, a smooth, or a cardiac muscle tissue. Uh, but anyways, at the end, what we're going to have is an order for uh, contraction. So what are the elements that we have here in, or how is the entire system organized? is what I'm going to explain now. And this is basic to understand the next chapters in the entire module of nervous system, which consists of four chapters in your book. So first of all, we have receptors, which are detectors, you know, uh, sensors that we have in the surface and of our body, but inside also. And they detect a stimulus. Uh, we have detectors or sensors or receptors for temperature, for pain, for touch, vibration, vision, hearing. We have all of those kind of receptors. And they're going to send through special wires or nerves, they're going to send that information to an integration center, which is the central nervous system. And there is where all of these stimulus coming from different sources are going to be integrated and a response is going to be elaborated and it's going to be sent out of the central nervous system to a target organ. And that target organ is the one that is going to receive the motor command, the contraction, the order for contraction. Okay, so <clears throat> how does this work? First of all, let's start describing this integrating uh, uh, system or the integration center. We have the brain, the, the main, main organ of the nervous system, and the spinal cord, which is continuous with the brain. Now, the brain and the spinal cord, they both make up the central nervous system. Now, any tissue nervous tissue that is outside the brain and the spinal cord, we're going to call it peripheral nervous tissue. So we're going to see uh, nerves that are coming out from the brain, right? And also we are going to find, uh, yeah, that was, well, nerves coming out from the brain and also we're going to find nerves coming out from the spinal cord on either side actually of the spinal cord through the intervertebral foramen remember so these 
uh, the cranial nerves. Okay. Hello. Uh, oh, 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 and now what I don't want. <laughs> That's hidden. Okay, so these nerves, the cranial nerves, we're gonna call it cranial because they're coming out from the brain, and the spinal nerves, the ones that are coming out from the spinal cord, they're going to form with the receptors, the peripheral nervous system. So what is peripheral nervous system? Any tissue, there is nervous tissue, there is outside the central nervous system, outside the brain and the spinal cord, and consists of the cranial nerves, the uh, spinal nerves, and the receptors, the neural uh, receptors that are detecting all of those stimulus. At least some of them, not all. Okay, <clears throat> good so far, right? Now, this peripheral nervous system has two branches. Okay, or two uh, subdivisions. One carries information from the receptor to the central nervous system, central nervous system towards the brain and the spinal cord. And we're going to call that the tattletellers are the sensory or afferent division. So these fibers are their nerves that are connected in one end to the receptors and to the other end, to any structure uh, of the central nervous system, brain or spinal cord. So they're gonna tattletale, they're gonna detect, for example, there is a fly, uh, a, you know, flying around, you can see it, you can hear the bzzz, and maybe now standing in your hands, you can feel it now, and all of those informations are going uh, or sensory informations are going to be sent to the integration center, to the central nervous system, brain and spinal cord. And each of these informations, the visual, the auditory, the tactile, are going to arrive in different areas of your, uh, of your brain. So, and that, it is important to understand that this information flows only in one direction. This is a one-way street in here. Uh, from the receptor, to the, um, well, to, from the receptor to the central nervous system. Now we have another division or another branch that is the executive branch, the one that carries the motor command after that sensory information arrived to the central nervous system, the central nervous system process uh, that information, right? and organize it and based on that and those stimulus is going to create a motor command that motor command is going to exit exit with an e the uh, central nervous system following another set of nerves uh, that or fibers that we are going to call motor or efferent division efferent division with an e okay so the motor it's easy to remember motor because they're carrying a motor command in order for the muscle to contract and produce a movement, okay? Um, or efferent is the exit or is going to the effector, okay? It's carrying the information to the effector. So those are the two main sub subdivisions of the peripheral nervous system. Now, the body in general is organized you know, we always like to divide things in anatomy. So we have like two subdivisions, the body itself. We have our shell consists of the somatic portion of the body. That's the somatic part. And what is inside our organs is the visceral portion, okay? So the somatic uh, division, which is an uh, or part of the human body consists of, as I told you, the shell is just the skin, the skeletal muscles, bones, uh, so skeletal organ system and the skin, okay? And the visceral division consists of the rest. So if where the skeletal muscles are not attached, which is the heart, the cardiac muscle tissue, 
and wherever you are going to find the smooth muscle tissue in the glands and the viscera of the respiratory, digestive, urinary, endocrine, etc. Uh, system. Okay? So, with these two subdivisions, we can understand now that we can, or the receptors can sense or detect stimuli depending if they are being felt on your skin and muscles or inside in our internal environment. So depending, we're going to classify these receptors in somatic and visceral receptors. So um, the somatic and both of these receptors can be general spread uh, without, uh, throughout the body or they are clustered in special organs, okay? That's what uh, general and special refers in your table or in this, uh, yeah, in this table. Now, the somatic, let's concentrate on the green, okay? Somatic, so includes, remember, sensations that we're feeling in our skin or in our skeleton organs, muscle, joints, bones, etc. So what can we feel with that? We can feel with those organs, we can feel touch, we can feel pain, temperature, vibration, and pressure, okay? And we have specific areas, specific uh, or special organs where these uh, or some of these receptors cluster and the somatic one are the vision and your ears, the hearing and uh, balance. Okay, so those are the somatic sensations. Now, the visceral sensations, let's see now the orange part of the table. Remember, is, are the sensations that are coming from our visceral organs. And our visceral organs are the organs that have either smooth or cardiac muscle tissue. So, in there, we can feel again, we can feel pain and we can feel temperature. We cannot feel touch or vibration. Actually, you can perform... A surgery the guy can wake up you can touch the stomach and he won't feel it he you can we can we don't have receptors for uh, uh, touch uh, in our viscera there are receptors for pain but there are not receptors for uh, touch okay also another kind of, kind of visceral sensations are hunger and nausea that usually uh, are linked to the sensation of stretching of the of these hollow organs, the viscera, uh, and the special senses, visceral senses, cluster in your nose, the uh, the smell, and um, your tongue to taste. So as you can see in here, we have chemical mediators. You know, so those are the visceral where we smell a chemical particle. And when we detect chemicals in here, that's, those are the visceral uh, spatial sensations. The uh, somatic uh, spatial sensations have to do with waves, you know, with light waves and uh, uh, sound waves for hearing and the vision and hearing. Okay, so those are the different sensations that we can feel, okay? Now remember, if, now let's go, let's, let's trace the path. If I'm feeling, for example, the example with the fly, uh, and I am seeing, hearing, and feeling in my skin the fly, that somatic sensation detected by my somatic receptors is going to travel through somatic sensory or afferent fibers to the central nervous system, okay? Now let's put another example. Let's say that uh, I need to pee, okay? So in, if I have, uh, feel the urge to urinate uh, or micturate, uh, it's because my urinary bladder is stretched, it's distended, it's full of pee pee, okay? So that stretching is detected by my visceral receptors, okay? It's a visceral sensation. It's going to be sent 
from this uh, organ, from the urinary bladder, following sensory visceral fibers now, not somatic, somatic now visceral fibers, sensory visceral fibers, to the integration center, the central nervous system, okay? The, spine, the brain and the spinal cord. So we explain that branch. Let's explain now the motor section or the, the, the motor division of the peri peripheral nervous system. Remember, we are describing this peripheral nervous system. And guess what? We have also somatic and visceral. And it's easy now because we know that somatic includes the skeletal muscles, okay? In here, the, remember, the motor division or efferent division is the one that is going to send the motor command, the order to contract from the uh, central nervous system, brain and spinal cord, to the target organ. And this target organ is a muscle. Anyways, or, or after all, what we're sending is an order to contract. And the only type of tissue in our body that can contract are muscles. Okay, so the target organs in here are muscles. If the target organ, I'm sorry, if the order or, or the motor command is given to a skeletal muscle, well, that is a somatic. It's following, that, following the somatic division. Now, the visceral division includes the glands, which has a smooth muscle tissue, right? So smooth muscle tissue and cardiac muscle tissue, okay? The heart and the rest of the organs, visceral organs that contain smooth muscle tissue, including glands. Now, we can, if, if you remember from uh, when we were describing muscles a few chapters ago, we said that skeletal muscles are under our conscious control. We can voluntarily control the contraction of the skeletal muscle tissue. And that's why the somatic division, the motor somatic division is also called the voluntary division because we can control it, okay? Now the visceral division C is including the heart and visceral organs. We have no conscious control over the contraction of the, the, uh, the cardiac and smooth muscle tissue in those organs. This is the reason why we call the motor visceral division the involuntary uh, division of the peripheral nervous system. Okay, another way to call them. Now, this involuntary uh, or visceral motor division of the nervous system is also called the autonomic nervous system. And it's called autonomic, and we will describe that to, towards the end of the module. But it's called like that because the contraction or, or, or yes, the, the contraction of these uh, muscles are kind of automatic, okay? Uh, we'll describe that in detail later. And we call this system the, well, the autonomic nervous system, which includes two branches, the sympathetic, that moves, that, that create, a, cre a, 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 a level of alert or increases a level of alert, uh, rushes blood throughout our muscles, increase the heart rate, increase the respiratory rate, and make us ready to fight or fly. And the other division of the involuntary or visceral motor division of the parasympathetic nervous system or, in short, autonomic nervous system, is the parasympathetic division. That's the one that slows everything down, and now you're relaxing, and you are not ready to fight or flight, okay? That's the parasympathetic nervous system. So I hope in here we, I could summarize like 20 pages from your book. This is basic and I need you to understand this very clearly because we're going to be using these terms to explain the rest of the three or four chapters that we have uh, to cover. Now, I highly recommend that you rewind and replay this video and watch it all over again. Now, 
See that I just explained and I try to color code my, uh, my slide and see that I have in green the somatic sensory division, in orange the visceral uh, sensory division, and in red the motor uh, somatic division, and purple the efferent, um, sorry, the motor visceral division. That's what we're seeing in here. When you combine the sensory input and the motor output in, from the central nervous system, you are going to end up with these four subdivisions of the peripheral nervous system. So the somatic sensory receives uh, uh, stimuli, stimuli coming from somatic receptors, okay, in the skin, and uh, in your eyes, and in your ear, uh, ears. Okay, and uses somatic sensory fibers to send the information to tattletale and tell the, uh, the brain and the spinal cord, the central nervous system, what is going on. Okay, the visceral sensory division now receives um, the stimulus from the receptors, the visceral receptors that are spread in your uh, heart and in your viscera where we have smooth muscle tissue and it detects stretch, pain, temperature, nausea, hunger, but also taste and smell. And since that information following visceral sensory fibers, another type of fibers, to the central nervous system. Okay, so we are now in the central nervous system, brain and spinal cord. I received my somatic and my visceral sensory information Let's integrate all of these and let's make a response and let's send it using now motor fibers, okay? Or motor wires or efferent with the E, efferent uh, fibers. So if that fiber is going to reach the skeletal muscle, well, that's the somatic motor division. If that uh, fiber, motor fiber, is going to reach either the heart or any other visceral organ containing smooth muscle tissue, well, that is the autonomic nervous system. That is the visceral motor division of the peripheral nervous system. Got it? Rewatch the video. See you in the next video. I'm going to start describing the nervous tissue as a tissue, you know, the, the cells that we can find in this um, system. See you.